This is 7 National News and in your top story, Egypt's President Mohamed Mursi received UAE Foreign Minister His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan on Thursday. At the meeting, the UAE Foreign Minister conveyed to President Mursi the best wishes of the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, along with a letter from the President inviting him to visit the UAE. The meeting discussed ways of boosting bilateral ties in a number of areas, as well as establishing joint ventures and increasing UAE investment into Egypt. The latest developments in the Arab region were also touched upon during the meeting, which was attended by Egyptian Foreign Minister Mohamed Kamil Amro and the UAE Ambassador to Egypt Mohamed bin Akira al Daheri. Sharjah police are rolling out a new traffic plan to regulate traffic congestion in the Emirate. According to a local paper, the new plan is, to set, is set to be integrated into the new 2012-2013 academic year, which starts on Sunday in anticipation of the rise in number of vehicles on the roads when school starts. The new plan will see the regulation of traffic on the external and internal roads into Sharjah. Colonel Mohammed Abdul Rahman, the Director of Traffic and Patrols at Sharjah Police, met with the various departments to discuss the the most important branches for the new academic year, as well as a number of routes for mobile patrols and traffic surgeons. UAE residents who are looking at renting properties must be fiercely vigilant when entering agreements, as warned by real estate regulatory authority representatives. As a result of a recent multi-million dirham rent scam in the Dubai last week, the CEO of RIRA, Marwan bin Khalita, has stressed that research is crucial when dealing with property agents. He added that RIRA has teamed up with the Dubai Economic Department and the Dubai Rent Committee to tackle the issue. Khalita also stated that as unfortunate as this may be, it should serve as a lesson for everybody to only deal with approved and licensed companies. The UAE's per capita carbon footprint of 9.5 hectares is four times the global average, according to the latest data. According to a local paper, Global Examination Institute, APMG International, states that commercial and residential properties in the Middle East currently use 225% more energy than their European counterparts. The company's CEO, Alan Harpalm, says that the UAE must step up its carbon footprint management as international arrivals, as international arrivals to the Middle East are expected to reach 68.5 million by 2020. Experts, however, have praised the UAE's efforts towards a greener lifestyle, such as the UAE strategy for green development for residents and Abu Dhabi's Estamada initiative, among others. Experts at the Dubai Carbon Center of Excellence say that, says that we are only a couple of concerted management steps away from creating a carbon-free UAE. The Telecommunications Regulatory Authority and the National Media Council examined areas of cooperation to protect the pi privacy of mobile phone users in the UAE this week. The meeting, which was attended by Mohammed Nasser al Ghanim, the TRA Director General, and Ibrahim al Abed, the Director General of the NMC, took place in Abu Dhabi and also discussed ways to provide sound connectivity for users across the country. The need to adhere to regulatory policies regarding spam and electronic communication, which was issued by by the TRA on December 30th, 2009, was also highlighted. A local daily reported that the TRA will prohibit marketing messages to mobile phones between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m., adding that individual privacy is of the utmost priority. The regulatory policy also applies to promotional message messages that are sent out by Etisalat and Du. Motorists who leave their vehicle engines running while they go on short errands will be fined heavily, according to the Dubai Police. Director General of the Traffic Department of Dubai, Major General Mohammed Saif Al Zafain, stated that by leaving engines running while not in the car is a clear inv invitation for thieves to steal contents or, even worse, take the vehicle itself. To highlight the severity of the issue, police officials stated that in previous months, 289 violators were fined in June, 275 in July and 225 in August. It was an excitement-filled Friday for many, many Filipinos in the UAE this weekend as the Philippine Basketball Association, also known as the PBA Legends, flew in for a goodwill game. Basketball is a popular game among Filipinos and the game brought the community together on Friday at the Al Shabab Club in Dubai. The game that pitted PBA sport legends against Dubai All-Stars did not disappoint. They carried out their legendary status despite the age difference and delivered a 109-105 win against the home team. According to the PBA players, they looked forward to the game as well as playing for their compatriots who have been away from home. 
first of all, I'm very thankful that I'm coming over here in Dubai. This is my first time. And uh, tonight, uh, this is a big game for not only for the legends, but to the all-star of Dubai. I thought being here in Dubai is like not leaving the Philippines. Uh, we've been to a couple of malls already, and I'm just so surprised how, how, how many Philippines there are in the, in the malls. And it feels like I'm, I'm home. So I'm excited um, for the rest of us to, to play in front of, these, of the Filipino fans tonight. Um, just being there, you know, um, most of them haven't really gone home for a while now and and just being here just to give them a little joy, it's, it's such a great honor. Robert Jaworski, a former Philippine senator and one of the PBA's 25 greatest players of all time, led the team to the UAE. While the fondly referred to living legend didn't play in the game, he promised to come back and do so next time. He addressed the Filipinos with messages of hope and inspiration, as well as encouraging everyone towards entrepreneurship. Earlier during the day, he opened a flea market at the Ashana Hotel, where business startups will now have a venue every first Friday of the month. Proceeds of the event were donated to the Polar Oa Philippine Consulate during the basketball game. We love you, we're all together, we're one race, and uh, we want to uh, be a part of uh, some, some moments of joy and touching base. And uh, particularly in this occasion, I was saying that uh, one of the greatest steps you could take is probably the steps towards multiplying your opportunity for hope, leading to success. And uh, I can see a good number of entrepreneurs, Filipino entrepreneurs that are here today. And uh, I salute and congratulate all of them. And I have to stress the point that uh, a country's uh, development and future lies so much in its strong middle class. Keralite women based in the UAE were given the opportunity to compete in the annual Miss Kerala 2012 beauty pageant as auditions took place in Dubai today. Known as one, is, one of the most coveted titles in Kerala, the competition has been around for the past 12 years and continues to transform everyday women into overnight stars. According to the judges, contestants are trained by grooming experts which help them to develop their overall personality and participate in national and international beauty pageants. Over the past decade, the pageant has witnessed more than 3,000 applicants from Keralites spread across the globe. Over the next few weeks, auditions will also be held at various cities in India, including Mumbai, Bangalore and Cochin. Miss Kerala 2012 will be crowned on the 21st of September 2012. When I had come in, when I was invited by Impresario to come in as one of the judges, my impression was that this would be selected only for a uh, beauty queen, but I've seen engineers, um, doctors participating, uh, people who are actually from different professional backgrounds. So I do believe this is a platform for everybody who is interested in taking it to the next level. As you know, there is a vast uh, Malayali population in um, UAE. So for the convenience of the you know thousands of young Malayali girls over here who are interested in participating, which was one of the reasons we you know chose to do auditions in Dubai. And finally, Pakistani luxury brand Ensemble introduced their line of fashion to Dubai over the weekend, housing over 50 collections from South Asia. A popular household name in Karachi and Lahore, Pakistan, Ensemble is known for their multi-label boutique representing high-end fashion designers such as Sana Safinaz, Umar Saeed, Deepak Perwani and Amar Bilal. Zeba Hussein and her daughters Shizrei and Shernaz said that they are enthusiastic about having their first international retail, retail store based in Dubai, adding that this is a first of many more endeavors in the Middle East region. Well, to be honest, for Dubai, since I mean we're launching Dubai today, we've got about over 40 designers currently in store. We've got about 15 more in the pipeline who will be launching, inshallah, before Diwali and Christmas. Uh, representation, again, we are always on the lookout for talent. So we've been fortunate enough to work with really big names like Sabya Sachi, Tarun Taliani, Rohit Bal, Banto Kazmi, Maheen Khan, Sana Safinaz. I mean, God's been very kind to us that way. People don't have to go as far as Karachi or Lahore to shop for the latest collection. They'll get it in Dubai at the most, at the same price, and you know the latest collection of both Indian and Pakistani designer. It's very easy now. It's just one stop shop. You know, you can just come and buy for your wedding, for any sort of occasion. 
and it's making it convenient for people living away from home.